When I was little, the amount of Marvel stuff that was out there was nowhere near the level that there is now. Now the MCU and Marvel dominates pretty much everything, everyone knows what Marvel is, but when I was growing up, I didn't really have that as much. What I had were comic books, TV shows, and animated movies. In 2004, Marvel signed a deal with Lionsgate to make animated movies. And think about it for a second. What is a perfect movie to start off multiple Marvel animated features? Well, that's the Avengers, obviously. My only regret is that I couldn't see you one last time. We will meet again, in this life, or the next. Love, Steve. At the time, we had Spider-Man 2 had just come out, the X-Men movies were thriving, but what about the rest of these superhero characters that fans adore? Captain America, Iron Man. An Avengers movie in concept is a great introduction to the Marvel Universe, because in just assembling the Avengers, you already get a bunch of history for multiple characters, and you have to expand on the world for them to be able to work together. Now let me tell you two things that are crazy. One, they adapted The Ultimates by Mark Miller, which is easily... Um, one of the worst comics uh, I've ever read. And two, the second crazy thing is that the first animated feature, Ultimate Avengers, and its sequel, Ultimate Avengers, guess what? Two, surprisingly and almost scarily, feel like they inspired both the Avengers and to a lesser extent, Avengers Age of Ultron. The thing is that the Avengers takes a lot from the Ultimates, but there are some things in Ultimate Avengers that feel very much like direct translations to Marvel's The Avengers 2012. And of course, this is due to the MCU Avengers movie taking a lot from the Ultimates, but at the same time, the Ultimates handles something so wonkily that it almost feels like the movie was more inspired by this animated feature than anything else. But let's talk about it. Let's talk about Ultimate Avengers. This thing made my childhood. This was the gateway for my five-year-old self to understand and learn about these characters. This is Ultimate Avengers. Just kidding. This is a sponsor segment. Before we talk about Ultimate Avengers, let's talk about established titles. All right, so you've heard me call myself Lord Mauricio in the past. Lord. Mauricio. Lord Mauricio. Well, that's because I actually am a lord, thanks to Established Titles, today's sponsor. Established Titles is a dope way to preserve the natural woodlands of Scotland, while helping global reforestation efforts. It's a project based on the historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds, or lords and ladies in English. And you can actually change your name to Lord or Lady and get it on credit cards, plane tickets, etc. The title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in Eddleston, Scotland, and an official certificate with a crest. So forget your degree! This is what you want to display in your home. Your certificate features a unique plot number so you know exactly where your land is, and hey, a tree is planted with every order. It makes a fun last minute gift, there's couple packs too, and they're currently running a Black Friday sale. If you use the code BROWNTABLE, you get an additional 10% off, so go to EstablishedTitles.com com slash brown table to get your gifts now and help support the channel. And listen up, the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot. So yeah, let's just say we could build our own little brown table kingdom. Thanks so much Established Titles for sponsoring this video, and let's get on to it. We're back! Ultimate Avengers, how do you start this movie? Well, it starts exactly like the Ultimates comic did. <laughs> It starts with a good old-fashioned war sequence that has Captain America and the U.S. Army going up against literal Nazis, and it freaking rules, man. It has the tone that I wish the third act of Captain America the First Avenger had. Like, right from the get-go, it feels like these people are going just to die. I don't know why I'm talking about Captain America the First Avenger right now, I'm just saying, this is handled extremely well. It gives Captain America almost this legendary, mysterious status. So they got a super weapon. We got one too. You mean that poster boy for the recruitment office? He's gonna die down there just like the rest of us. Where's your super soldier, Barnes? We're getting blown to pieces. Like, is he actually just a poster boy or is he an actual super soldier and leader that can go up against literal Nazis and kick their asses? And the truth is, yes, he is the second thing. Captain America shows up riling up the troops and it's great. It's so great actually, up until you realize that they're not just fighting Nazis, they're fighting Nazi aliens. Yeah man, let me say that again so you just it hits you better. They're fighting Nazi aliens. Oh my God. The Avengers fight the Chitauri in this movie, just like, you know, in the movie Marvel's Avengers. And in this interpretation, like in the Ultimates comic, they are Nazi aliens. 
And that is just fucking... Mark Miller, you're nuts, man. You're nuts. But yeah, Captain America stops a bomb, he's blasted into the water, and he freezes, and he's stuck there for years, up until he's finally digged out by, guess who? Nick Fury. Well, I'll be damned. The entire sequence where Captain America wakes up plays out exactly like in Captain America the First Avenger. Well, not exactly, but it's very, very similar, particularly the ending. A lot has changed, son. Did we win? We did. The main thing this movie gets particularly right is the characterization of its characters, specifically Captain America. Captain America is portrayed beautifully, and I think he's portrayed better here than in the MCU Avengers movie, because this movie actually makes him feel like a man out of time. Captain America the First Avenger does not explore him being in the modern world, and in the Avengers movie, it also does not explore him being in the modern world. It is explored in deleted scenes, but even those deleted scenes are not as good as the undeleted scenes that are present in this movie. There's not only an entire sequence where Cap meets up with Bucky, who in this universe isn't the Winter Soldier, and he's just aged gracefully along with his wife, Gail, who is actually Steve's long-lost love. Yeah, it's not Peggy Carter in this movie, and not just that. The movie surprisingly lets the audience breathe, and has a whole scene where Captain America pays his respects to his fallen comrades. This movie has some unique moments that I wish were present in the live-action movies. Instead of going into Iron Man or Hulk or Thor, let's talk about Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne. I really love this interpretation of Hank and Janet because while they do have their issues, they clearly do love each other. And it's not like in the comics where in the original he just beats the shit out of Janet, and it's not like in the Ultimate comics where he beats the shit out of Janet. Oh wait, I forgot. In the Ultimate comics, he doesn't just beat up Janet. Uh, he has ants try to eat her. Ant-Man, get it? Ha <laughs> ha! Fuck. This movie is basically if they made the Ultimates readable. It's like the writers of this movie went, Oh, these are beloved characters. Let's not make them pieces of shit. And it works because the groundwork, the basic groundwork of the Ultimates is really good. And so if it's refined and the characters aren't written like assholes and are written as characters that you can actually root for, then it becomes an engaging story. And no wonder that the MCU took similar aspects from the Ultimates and changed it up. And again, I feel they took aspects of Ultimate Avengers and changed it up to fit their narrative. Anyways, a good difference between the Ultimate Avengers movie and the MCU Avengers is that Nick Fury is actually reluctant to assemble the Avengers. Kind of like in the Avengers movie where Nick Fury's plan B is to create Hydra weapons? Phase two is S.H.I.E.L.D. uses the cube to make weapons. My super soldier program has yet to yield results. Begin recruitment efforts immediately. In this movie, that's his plan A, but it's not Hydra weapons, it's to replicate the super soldier serum to create an army of super soldiers to combat an alien threat, the Chitauri. I wonder if the closed captions of this video are gonna translate Chitauri into... Shitari? Like a shitty Atari. Anyways, a lot of things this movie gets right are the assembling of the Avengers. The Avengers are assembled one by one, kind of like the first act of the MCU's Avengers, but this actually takes the entire first and second acts. And the Avengers are extremely reluctant. They don't want to join. It takes them a while to join. Thor doesn't join up until the end. In this interpretation, they actually don't know if he's the actual Norse god Thor, or if he's just some crazy dude with a magic hammer. He's also an activist, and he's just a great character in these movies. So what do you say? This. Uh, uh. And this. Uh. And then there's Iron Man, and I'm not super sure if Iron Man is a secret identity in the Ultimates universe, but in this movie it is. Tony Stark has a secret alter ego, and that's Iron Man. And it's eventually discovered in the movie, and it's this whole thing, and it's a great reveal because nobody fucking knows this, and everyone's kind of been shit-talking Tony Stark for the whole movie. Tony will just backburner us for the next 12 months. I don't know how you guys put up with that arrogant jerk. Oh my! All the characters are on point. None of them really work together very well. They have to fail before they can finally understand how to work as a team. And guess. Guess who they fight? Guess. <laughs> Not only do they fight the Chitauri and they assemble as the Avengers, they also fight the Hulk. 
The Hulk is also an adversary in this movie. And it's not like the Ultimates comic, by the way, where it's a really shitty reason. They're like, what do we do as the Avengers? Oh, we have to fight something. Have them fight the Hulk so everyone knows who the Avengers is and they have someone to fight. In this movie, Bruce Banner is desperately trying to find a way to cure the Hulk, and if not, then at least control him. The characterization for Bruce Banner is actually extremely excellent in this movie, and it's almost a little anti-hero-ish, and I quite like that. It makes Bruce Banner feel very troubled, conflicted, and against the world, like his character has been many times in the comics. And in the movie, unlike the Ultimates comic, he's not a piece of shit, he's genuinely trying to do good. And he goes against orders, becoming the Hulk, but actually controlling him up until the point where he can't. <laughs> and seeing his relationship with Betty Ross, how strained that is, compared to the Ultimates, where again, everyone's a terrible person in the Ultimates, and she is no different. But in this movie, she genuinely cares and just wants to do right by him, but is honestly scared of the Hulk as anyone should be. But she also knows her responsibility to him in a way because she's the only one that can calm him down. That's actually one of the ways they can defeat the Hulk in the end when the Hulk and the rest of the Avengers destroy the Chitauri. What is she doing? He'll kill her! No, he won't! She's trying to calm him down so he won't burn through the sedative. Now, the entire final battle between the Hulk and the Ultimate Avengers is fucking excellent. This shit defined me as a kid, man. I was like, oh my god, the Hulk is fucking crazy, dude. Hey, we're not finished yet. Not only does he lift Thor's hammer, <laughs> with pure strength, which by the way, I feel he shouldn't do. I just, I think that's wrong. But yeah, in this movie, he fucking lifts it and he starts beating the shit out of Thor with it. Holy crap, bro. And the Avengers to fight the Hulk get absolutely shredded, man. They, they get so fucking wrecked. The Hulk, I think pretty much breaks the shit out of Hank Pym's knee. I don't think the fucking MCU had Captain America this fucked up in the first Avengers movie. Like, goddamn, bro. There were a lot of creative liberties taken in this movie, thankfully, uh, at least story-wise. But visually, this movie pretty much replicates the Ultimates comic really well, and I really like that because visually, the Ultimates comic is great. As with any adaptation, you know, we have to take liberties in order to tell a story that works well. Um, but we stuck closely in many areas. There were beautiful moments uh, throughout the comics. Whenever we could take a panel or a scene uh, in its entirety or just for a moment, we tried to include it. Because again, even Variety said at one point, this is the greatest film that'll never be made. My dearest Gail, my only regret is that I couldn't see you one last time. But what was most important wasn't just getting every shot, it was making sure that it stayed true to the original work that was created. People who see this will feel the way they did when they read the book, they'll be moved in those same ways, and I think they'll be getting the kinds of characters that they enjoyed in, uh, in the original series. At the time, creating something of this scale, of a movie like The Avengers, was just not something that was feasible. It wasn't something that could be thought of. Like, no one making this movie would ever think that the Avengers would be facing off against the Shatari only, like, what, less than a decade later? But it happened, and I'm glad it did, but I'm also glad that this movie exists. Ultimate Avengers was a unique opportunity for us to be able to get Captain America and Iron Man and Thor and Black Widow, and Ant-Man, and Wasp, and Nick Fury, and all these characters in one movie. I have a genuine appreciation for animation. There's things in animation that you can't do in live action, and this movie feels like comic book characters truly come to life because they are illustrated. Hand-drawn animation is able to capture those subtle moments and gestures and movements and expressions that captivate audiences. It's been doing that since people wept at uh, Snow White. They are drawn, it isn't CG, it feels like they were ripped directly out of the pages, and it works really well. I remember watching this movie, Ultimate Avengers, and it kind of defining how I drew characters, how I interpreted characters. This movie takes everything good about the Avengers comics, this movie takes everything good about the Ultimates comics, and combines them into truly making, yeah, you guessed it, the Ultimate Avengers. 
Thanks so much for watching the video. Make sure to check out Interstellar Ranger Commence, Brown Table's original animated series, on the channel now. Thanks so much, Katsudan Riku, for this awesome Hope Griffin fan art from Interstellar Ranger Commence. She looks awesome. I love how you illustrated her powers. It's just dope. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, patrons, as well, of course, for supporting the channel. And if you want to be a part of the Brown Table, subscribe and turn on notifications to get a chair. Once you get a chair, you'll be able to vibe with all of us 24 7. And if you are part of the Brown Table, well, guess what? You will actually be an Avenger. That's right. Ultimate Avengers has nothing on us. So thanks so much for coming to the table, and I'll see you all next time.